Hey everybody, David the AI Guide here. Welcome to the AI Guide where we're making AI human. Thanks so much for tuning in. Please be for sure to follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Also, click the links below. Get my book on Amazon, The Beginner's Guide to AI, A Short History of AI, and Current Impact on 10 Different Industries. Cover a lot of ground in the book, but it's short. Only two to three hours to read the whole thing. And the second link is free resources to learn much more about AI. Why? Because the world is just about to change dramatically. And today's episode is a perfect example of that. So I recently saw an article, again, thanks to ID TechX, on quantum computing, and it's a forecast of what's coming with quantum computing. And we've talked about it on this channel before. It's been a very, very popular topic, but these guys are really on top of it, having attended many conferences and speaking to a lot of people at the forefront of quantum computing. So there's a lot to learn here, a bunch of stuff I didn't know before I came across this because quantum computing isn't really commercialized yet, right? It is still in development, but they talk here in just a second about what those developments are and what they're going to mean. So let's get right into it. They first say that um, there are several different types of quantum computers that are in development right now, and those are called the following, uh, superconducting, silicon spin, photonic, trapped ion, neutral atom, topological, diamond defect, and annealing. And this is pretty common when new, a whole new technology is being developed, right? There's many different approaches to get to a result, and it will take time to determine which one or more work, and even if more than one works, which works best or works best for a particular application. So this is really common in tech development. These competing quantum computing technologies are compared here, uh, typically by number of qubits and coherence time and fidelity, meaning accuracy of results. Uh, so they're using key benchmarks to see how good these computers are and how well they can be scaled. And this article looks ahead 20 years from 2023 this year, which literally just began, all the way to 2043. So that's a huge amount of time. And that's why there's many different approaches since it's early on. So they're looking at industries where there will be early adoption of quantum computing. And some of those are pharmaceutical, chemicals, aerospace, and financial institutions. Particularly tra trading is one where quantum computing is very likely to be used. So they go on to say that 2023 is a pivotal year for quantum computing. Why? In 2022, just last year, multiple funding rounds surpassing $100 million of investment were closed, and the transition has started from lab-based toys to commercial products. Competition is building not only between different companies, but between different technologies, which I just mentioned. So their forecast is that this industry will start out slowly, but grow very, very rapidly in the future years. And just to give you an example of that growth, in 2011, there were only 10 companies working on quantum computing hardware. Now there are nearly 50. So that's a five-fold increase in 11 years. And that's typical of exponential technologies, as we've talked a lot about here on this channel. So they say, 
In 2022, superconducting quantum computers with over 400 qubits were made accessible via the cloud for companies to trial out their problems. So once again, we see that the success of new exponential technologies is dependent on certain base technologies that have already rolled out that were cr are critical to their development. In other words, they could not be done were it not for these foreground technologies. Cloud computing allows people to bring me more resources to bear much, much more cheaply than it used to be. So for example, you used to have to big build, sorry, you used to have to build bigger and bigger mainframe computers to do this kind of stuff. Well, now you have servers and you can add more and more servers from the cloud to solve a problem, thereby exponentially increasing computing power. By the way, AI was not practical or the neural net and the neural net was not practical until the invention of cloud computing as we've talked about a bunch of times on this channel. So what we can see here is that Quantum computers are growing beyond lab scale, but they're still very much in development. Let's hear just a little more about what they have to say. So there's many differences between these different technologies that are being developed, and I listed those technologies before. Basically, there's 50 key companies working on developing this hardware now and getting it to commercialization. What is commercialization? It's getting it to where these computers will be accessible and be able to solve practical concrete problems. Now, we talked about on a prior episode last year about how quantum supremacy was reached. And what that meant is that a quantum computer was finally able to solve a problem that traditional computers could not solve in any reasonable amount of time. And the problem solved would have taken traditional computers, even with cloud computing and supercomputing, millions of years to solve, and they solved it in a few hours. This is the potential of quantum computing, and it's stunning, but they have to finish the development of it. So they say that the number of systems sold and revenue will start out very slowly during the 20 year period from 2023 to 2043, but will accelerate quickly, especially from 2030 on. And we've talked about 2030 being a pivotal year before. Quantum computing opens the door for AI to reach an insane level of exponential growth. And what do I mean by that? I mean, it opens the door. If it can solve algorithms or equations that traditional computers can't solve in millions of years, think of the power of a quantum computer for algorithm development and or figuring out problems with ultra large algorithms. One of the previous videos we did talked about how algorithms have gotten bigger and bigger and bigger as computing power has grown and become more accessible and cheap. This is cloud computing on super steroids and it opens unlimited possibilities for further development of AI. It seems to me, now this article doesn't talk about what I'm going to say at all, but it seems to me that quantum computing will be enabling an enabling technology for artificial general intelligence because it will give the level of computing power similar to a human brain and possibly greater and therefore enable AGI. So, We've talked a lot before about how many, many different technologies that are all exponential work together and accelerate and enhance each other. And AI will certainly be dramatically accelerated 
by quantum computing and vice versa. I mean, they can use a quantum computer with an algorithm written to determine what the next step in quantum computing is, and that computer will figure out the next evolution of quantum computers. Anything is possible in this environment. This is why I started the AI Guide to prepare you for a massively different future, a future so different from today by 20 years from now that it's difficult to conceive of. And if you're young, you will be in the prime of your working lifetime by then. And once again, I saw another article that I'm not going to go into depth on today, but the article confirmed again what I have been saying, which is that jobs requiring the human touch, like nursing, like psychology, things like this will survive and thrive. Jobs that can be fully automated, like packing cartons at the end of an assembly line or moving parts on an assembly line or moving boxes around a warehouse. Those kind of jobs are going to be automated, <laughs> but not ones requiring human touch, of which there's a lot. So quantum computing is set for steroids. There's still many breakthroughs that need to be made for it to be really commercially useful. But based on this survey of the 50 plus companies, it's clear that ultimately one of these techniques or more will succeed. A perfect example that relates to what I just said is fusion power. They had tried for 30, 40 years to get fusion power to work and finally did it. And they did it with by continuing to iterate different approaches until they found one that worked. And with all those different types of architecture and quantum computing, you can see that's exactly what they're doing. So they will be successful. I can't tell you when, but they will be successful and it will change the world and it will change AI and it will change robotics and it will change many, many other things. So stay tuned for that. Oh, they specifically mention autonomous vehicles with quantum computing. All right, that's it. Thank you so much. Click those links, get my book, and get those free resources. Learn more to prepare yourself for a radically different future. We're here trying to give you tools to help. DavidTheAIGuide.com slash resources. Take care. See you soon. Bye-bye.